Okay, so now what I've done is I've got all the pieces now polished up and these I'm still going to buff up a little bit so I've got a nice finish on them. They look quite good, I'm happy with that. And I've painted the inside, okay, I've painted them red. You always want to paint the inside of your army run, always have to, but I prefer it so that you don't get rust on the inside. So you just prep it because obviously you sweat and there's condensation and that, so I paint the inside, I think a few armorers do as well then you, you won't get rust on the inside because that is a problem with sweat and so on. Not all of it does. Historic examples, I can't see anything, but there is, um, there is on a lacquer on the inside. Um, also a lacquer on the outside of armor to uh, keep it from rusting. So all of these pieces, I've now rasped the ones that I want to and I've painted the inside. So hopefully those are, I'm going to let them dry nicely. Let them dry over, overnight and then we can start putting it all together. I'm going to put it together and then once the, the helm is finished, I'm going to go on to show how to make chainmail. I'm still debating whether I'm going to finish up a, a full Aventail for this or just show how to make chainmail. I simply despise chainmail. I hate making it. I've made so much of it, I just don't want to make any more. So there we go. These are all the pieces now ready for um, final uh, buffering and then fitting all together. Great. Right, so what I've done now is I've cut out the, the, the leather that goes in the brim and I've punched out holes for where you, the stitching of the line is going to go, right? So this you'll be mounting on, you'll be riveting onto the brim of the helmet. So now all of these pieces such as the nose guard have been brassed and oiled. I do suggest you still oil it because I did notice that it still rusts even through the brassing. So all of these have been done. All of this has been done. Maker's mark there. Very important. Very important. Important. And the panels have been polished. So they... Okay, it's still a little bit rough. Like I said, I can't get a perfect polish on it. But that's up to a 320 grit. My belts have been running out and I can't get more during the lockdown, so unfortunately that's the best I can do. I could probably push it a little bit more if I had new belts and, and polishing compounds. But yeah, those are those. They're still nice and shiny. They look very good. And so yeah, so what's going to happen then is if you look at this, these are where the chain is going to go. And this will most likely go into here with the... Uh, Stitching down, I'm still decide it'll go in there, and those will be riveted on like such, right? So you stitch the liner onto there. Let's see. So you stitch the line onto there. These get riveted onto the helmet. So yeah, so that's how far I am now. Then we'll be going forward. It's um, um also start trying and working out. How I'm going to show you how to make chainmail. Um, so yeah, and then that's how it's going to go. I can show you an example of chainmail that I've got. Right, so now I've got two examples of chainmail. Okay, this is the one most people make, right? This is just butted uh, wire. This one is quite thick. I've gone over to thin, thinner rings to make it a bit lighter. It's a normal four in one pattern. As you can see, that's a normal chainmail look. It will hang this way, so it's, it's a denser weave. You never want your chainmail to hang like that because it's just too wide open. Right, so that's just the basic one. Butted means that they are just cut and butted up like that. So you can see they, they are decently strong. And this is, I think this is 2 mil wire. I, uh, I'm not too sure what gauge that is, but it's 2 millimeters thick. I think I've gone down to a 1.6 millimeter thickness. I just find they work better. It's lighter. And I think this is on a 8 mil mandrel. So the inside diameter should be about 8 mils, if I'm not mistaken. But this looks like my older one. I think I did a 10 mil in there, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so this is the easiest. This is what most people tend to make. It's the easiest to make. Um, and this is the most popular one that you'll find. Now this, what I've got here, is more historically accurate chain mail. So this is riveted mail. Okay, so this is more historically accurate onto how it would have been made. So this is a... Um, 50 50 solid ring and riveted ring so what that means is struggling to focus here is that some are actually solid rings so you can see that one is actually a solid ring i made those from washers and then some of them are actually 
riveted. Come on, why is it not focused? So there we go. So some of them are actually riveted. So this is essentially an earlier period. Um, way they did the mail is obviously it's easier. You punch out solid rings and then you make riveted ones. You put then four solid ones onto a riveted one and so on and so forth. And that's how you work on. So this one definitely takes a lot longer because there's quite a bit of a process that you have to... Okay, why is this thing not focusing? There we go. So there's quite a bit of a process to make this stuff. Um, the galvanized wire has to be stripped of the galvanizing first. You have to uh, anneal the wire so it's a bit softer. Then you have to so that you can obviously um, punch holes into it and then rivet them together. This by far is the strongest male that you'll find. Right, Riveted ones, they do not pull apart. Um, they can, but not nearly as badly as the the um, butted one. So these are riveted together. They're quite solid. So if they hook on stuff, they, there's a very small chance of them breaking. Um, so this is the nicer one. I don't know if I'll go through and making this. will take far too long. This one, like I said, the normal one, because it's butted, if they do hook, it can pull loose. You know, if it hooks on steel or armor and stuff like that. They do pull open, so this requires a lot more maintenance. But also this, the nice thing with this, is that the more you play with it, it polishes itself up. Plus it's galvanized, it won't rust. But the more you play with it, it will clean itself up. Essentially the same should, the same should apply to this one. Um, what I've heard is, I'm, you know, I'm, I've seen stuff and I've heard stuff, how they used to polish this, is in a barrel of sand and you move the barrel around and it will polish itself up. Um, but obviously, you know, they'd rub uh, grease or fat into it to obviously stop it rusting, first of all. But you can, you know, um, polish up again if you do play with it. It can clean itself up, but these don't move over one another as easily as the butted stuff does. Because these aren't, you know, even round rings. How I did this, um, these flat, well, these solid ones are actually just washers. That I also stripped the galvanizing off and heat treated them, so they're also all black. And then the other ones are just normal 1.6 more wire. Oh, there, see, nice and close. And this one is definitely more rusted because you know there's no galvanizing on it. So you can see the rivets and the solid rings. Right, there we go. Okay, so this is a this is what it's looking like now. I'm very I'm reasonably chuffed. It's looking coming out. It's looking good. It's coming out well. So now it's time to rivet. So I'm going to start riveting now. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole riveting process. It's going to take a bit of time and I've shown you how to do the rivets before. So this one can be tricky when you need to rivet it because of the top there. So now it's difficult to reach. So when riveting these, I, re I suggest you remove um, all, but, all but one of the panels. So you start off with one of the panel, you work your way around, and then it will give you space to uh, rivet these up. The difficulty comes in with the last panel so that is when you've got nowhere to reach into it and then you'll have to rivet make a plan to rivet those ones on the the real end there that um i'll see if i can when i get there let me make another video of that on my tips and tricks on how to rivet the the inside of that helmet um so yeah, but so far it's looking good um and we'll see how far we're going to rivet. Also, don't rivet these last ones yet because I still have to put in the leather band that's going to go inside. So I'm going to rivet the rest of these um, to keep it together. And I'm going to leave these uh, these rivets open for the time being. And then I will, um, it will hold itself together pretty well. And then I'm going to put those on last. And so I can put the leather band in it. Okay, let's, let's carry on.